when you started studying martial arts, because obviously that was, I mean, you know, that's the thing that ultimately, you know, got you to Hong Kong and uh -huh. launched your career and all of that. But what made you, was it, was it literally like seeing Jet Li do it and then you had to do it yeah. too? Yeah. So I grew up in the Bay Area and they had this thing on Saturdays, which was like a double feature Kung Fu thing on the week, on Saturday on TV. And so me and my neighbors, we would watch that and there'd be like these old dubbed Shaw Brothers movies. And then sometimes you'd see a Bruce Lee movie in there and there'd see some Jackie Chan stuff. And so I became a fan of the martial arts movies through that. But it wasn't until I was seven and Shaolin Temple came out. My grandfather took me to the Great Star Theater in Chinatown, which is like an iconic movie theater. And we went and watched it. And he goes, you know all that other stuff you've been watching on TV? That's all fake. This is real Kung Fu. And there's like a montage scene where all the monks are training doing all these different styles and I remember like just completely falling in love with all of it and going that's what I want to do and also being an Asian American kid a Chinese American kid growing up and not seeing myself represented on screen I saw it there and I was like oh that's a way to connect with my culture and so I immediately wanted to learn it and then it took five years before my mom would allow me to learn martial arts because she I was a hyperactive kid so she thought I was going to get in fights and cause trouble at school so she would not let me until she found the right teacher the right master and then she found my teacher YC Chang uh, when I was 12 and then I started training with him and then changed completely changed my life. When did that translate though for you to see it as not just wanting to be like what you were seeing up on a screen but like Acting actually and actually doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Um, interesting enough, I never thought to be an actor or even do stunts or anything like that. It was like I compartmentalized that martial arts was this one thing that was a way to connect with my culture. And then movies are something that I use to entertain myself. But I never thought of myself as being an actor until I went to Hong Kong in 97 uh, on a college graduation trip. I studied architecture. So <laughs> I was planning to be an architect, but I'd done so many internships, I realized like the profession wasn't for me. And then, um, because it wasn't as creative as school was. School was like super creative. And so I was like, okay, I want to find a job that is really creative, that I can kind of use these architecture skills. So I thought about like set design or location, uh, location scout, things like that that was related to film, but not in front of the camera. And then I went to Hong Kong 97, traveled around for a bit and then I got scouted basically out of, off the street I was in a bar having a drink and some girl came up to me and asked me if I wanted to do a TV commercial so I jumped in I said okay sure I'll do it and I did it and a month later it came out and then the director of my first film saw that commercial called me in for a meeting we had a, like an hour long talk and I walked out and then two hours later he called me he goes okay I want you to play the lead role in my film I was like, what, what, what are you talking about? And he goes, no, I want you to play a lead role in my film. I'm like, but I don't speak Chinese very well and I've never acted before. I'm like, I don't think I can do this for you. So I turned it down. Like, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, no, I don't want to screw this guy's dream up. So I, I kind of left it. And then he kept calling me pretty much like every other day for a month. And then wow. at the end of it, I was like, okay, if you don't blame me for screwing this up, I'll give it a shot. Wow. And so that's how I fell into it. And it wasn't a martial arts role at all. It was a very complicated, independent movie where I was playing a gay character who was struggling with his identity and how to tell his parents about it, basically. Right? So it was not oh. easy to do. And so um, that became how I started in the business. And then for a long, and then a week later, I met Jackie Chan at, at a party, and he quickly asked for my phone number. And then the next day, I'm in his office, and he basically goes. Well, we want to manage you, but there's nothing going on in the business right now. And I go, well, I've got this script offered. And he goes, oh, we'll manage you then. And so within the same week I met Jackie, he took over my management. And then uh, I was became a, a wow. Hong Kong movie star. <laughs> but that's you must crazy. have idolized. I know you must have idolized Jackie Chan. Oh, dude, the first time I met age, him, so right? nervous. Like, I didn't even want to meet him at the, it was at a party, and I didn't even want to meet him. And I was, um, my, I was standing in the corner just watching him. And my friend's like, come here, I'll introduce you to him. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I, I just want to see, I just want to look at him. And she's like, no, why? And I go, you never heard that term, like, never meet your heroes? Like, I didn't want to mm, be disappointed, right? Totally. And so, so she still dragged me over there. And then she's like, oh, this is my friend. He just did like a TV commercial and he knows martial arts. And he just looked me up and down. He goes, what's your phone number? And so wow. I gave it to him and I'm like, he's not going to call me. And then two days later they called and I went in and then changed, changed my whole life. 